Hi guys, welcome back to the second episode of the Movable Block Entity series. Today I want to work on something really big. I want to work on a TNT efficient dispenser world eater. In the last couple of years, TNT duping has been used to remove large parts of the landscape using the world eater concept. And the destiny of TNT duping is also directly tied up to the introduction of Movable Block Entity to the Java edition. You know it from first hand. TNT duping will only be removed if movable block entities will be added because they act as a substitute. The reason why we use TNT duping is that it actually makes TNT movable in a way, which is impossible because you can't move a dispenser at the moment in normal Java edition. But in case we could, we wouldn't need to rely on TNT duping anymore because we can just bring our TNT uh, anywhere we need it. So I launched a TNT duping world eater. Here we really don't need to worry about how much TNT we're using because we're duping it anyway. So here we push the module forward, it dupes one TNT and it drops down. But I'm pretty sure this would also work if we would only um, activate a dispenser with TNT every second block. Because if you have to put in crafted TNT in the dispenser, this would get quite expensive and you want to use as little as possible. Maybe we can even also um, push down the module two blocks at the end. So with this design here, we basically move the TNT duping module over, it gets sent back, and we push it one down, and then chase off the next layer. Maybe we can actually also do two layers at once, but this would also require that we adjust the water sweepers at the bottom, so they would be able to take out two layers at once. I'm pretty sure the way to do this would be, instead of having blocks here attached to the bottom, to have downwards facing pistons, that get activated by the uh, by observers. This way you could probably also take out two layers at once. Another thing we can maybe also adjust to increase the TNT efficiency would be having a TNT dispenser every seventh block if we align the TNT. So here we have the TNT duping modules. The TNT gets aligned one side here, just the way the uh, TNT duping model works, but can have a little bit of random momentum to the right. That's why we have a TNT duping module every sixth block. We perfectly align a TNT. You could probably have it every seventh block. Would be another way to improve the efficiency. All right, those would be the goals for the day. Let's try to design a dispenser right here that uses as little TNT as possible. So in order to deal with the alignment issue of the TNT, as you can see, yeah, the dispensed TNT is very random could hop to any side. We could, for example, have another flying machine under the TNT dispenser that immediately would catch the TNT and then let it drop down. But there's even a better way to deal with this. There's a trick that I've been told about by Smokey Dog. If you place a honey block directly in front of the dispenser and don't have any other blocks here above, then the TNT almost falls down perfectly straight. So it can have a little bit of a, an offset to the side, but it's really in the, the centimeter range. So if you would have a flying machine module, where we have a situation like that. You can just push this forward, for example. So we need to make sure that, yeah, we don't have a, any block here on top of the honey. Could use that to also align the TNT nicely. There's just the other issue, sometimes the TNT jumps up a little bit and then gets stuck in the honey block. I think this happens if the TNT um, yeah, jumps to the left and gets caught by this honey block. But if we maybe put another block above, or any block, then the TNT that jumps up a little bit would collide um, with this block and doesn't glide down the other honey block. As you can see here. Oh, there's really no delay with the TNT falling down, and you always get the same result. So next we need to add something to activate the dispenser every second time. Could add a little T flip-flop here. So a sticky piston, an observer in front, and then another observer here, activating the sticky piston each time. So if I push this forward, push the observer right next to the Spencer, it doesn't trigger because of the update order here. Basically, we push this forward, the observer gets activated, pushed over, and then doesn't activate the dispenser. But if you push this forward again, 
then observe wood trigger dispenser and we get a tnt the next time don't get one and so on so every second time we get a tnt now and it's also perfectly aligned let me just basically need to add a two-way flying machine to this so something like that just need to power this somehow yeah, we can probably just put down server here. Then we can launch this. This would be our module that activates TNT every second block. As you can see already here at the bottom, looks like that's definitely enough TNT. Let's make a huge jump forwards in development. I spent over 10 hours and got a fully functional version. So we got the TNT opening modules here, the tube every second block, and this gets pushed down two blocks on each end. The bottom, we also have the sweepers that we use in order to get rid of the remaining liquids. Those don't get blown up by TNT. So we got a yeah, downwards facing piston that is getting powered by an observer here. You could also use QSC to power multiple pistons, but sometimes there will be situations that there will be a block below one piston and it couldn't extend then the neighboring one wouldn't get updated. That's why we use a observer for every single piston. All right, let's launch this, try it out. So I think I just need to remove the... Oh no, I need to place down some block and launch this. Let's check it out. What do we also do in order to make this a bit quicker? Because at the end we actually have to put in a new TNT into the dispenser. We actually swap the dispensers. That's the system we have here. This dispenser is getting filled at the moment with TNT, which can be stored here in the chest here in the back. And then, yeah, instead of pre-filling this one here, we just leave this one behind at the station and use this one instead. So what happens pretty much is we push down, or we park the dispenser under this one, push this down, and then, the honey block would attach to this dispenser. Let's actually check it out. We need to wait for the sweepers at the bottom to arrive. Now here we also have the QC power, the dispenser, because of technicality, the observer would otherwise uh, trigger this one here. Okay, let's check it out. Any moment, this will be sent down again. Two, two layers this time. So here we go. And we swapped out the dispenser. Then we launch the sweepers at the bottom. And then we QC power this one here so it doesn't get activated the next time this comes in. And the dispenser is getting now refilled. All right. Yeah, let's have a look uh, at the bottom if this is actually enough TNT to take out terrain. I think we need to cover a couple layers of, of trees. Let's make a little skip until we actually hit solid stone. So here we can see it, with this amount of TNT we can take out two layers at once. The ocean definitely has enough strength. All the blocks are getting blown up. What will be interesting to see is what happens if we hit the fluid layer. So mostly the ocean here, there's sometimes a little lakes above Y63 or even at down at Y10 lava lakes. Because the fluids also shield some blocks from the explosion. So, yeah, let's hope that the sweepers will be able to take out most of the fluids. Okay, this time it looked really good. Took out two layers of fluids. We got the next one. Oh, there's some leftover stones. Oh, this doesn't seem to work. This was really a major setback in development. Seems like the whole concept was flawed. I tried around a lot of things in order to make this work somehow. So I tried to move the modules closer together. So we have a TNT every five blocks. Then I also tried to lower down the sweepers here at the bottom so they would take out the liquids one block earlier. That also didn't work. Um, what actually, after a lot of trying, seemed like would work is moving down uh, the modules every block again instead of every second block. So no matter what I tried, 
when I was moving it down uh, two layers at once, it just didn't work. So yeah, there's a huge setback and it will also require a lot more TNT if you don't need to dupe every second layer. So with the initial concept, we would have used about 20% of the TNT compared to the TNT duping version. Um, yeah, what seems to work, so I rebuilt this manually in order to test it out, was having a TNT module every fifth block and move down every layer. But activate the dispenser every second block. So this way we would use about 60% of the TNT compared to the TNT duping version. Still a good improvement, but unfortunately not quite there what I was hoping for. But at least it's a step in the right direction. I also had uh, yeah, other ideas how we could maybe improve this. So we only need uh, the sweepers or the liquid removal on certain layers. If you have a little lake like this, you can just place on some sponges real quick and remove that. So what we actually did during our speedrun phase when we built uh, a witch perimeter almost every month was we had a sweeperless world eater and only attached the sweepers uh, on the fluid layers. So we could, for example, use that concept again. There we had a module that was actually pushed down six layers at once, run that until we hit by 63 where the ocean layer starts and then move it down a block every layer again. So this would be one way to make it a bit more TNT efficient. But let's actually not get ahead of ourselves. Let's try to actually redesign this in a way to um, yeah, move down every layer once and uh, yeah, still dispense the TNT every second block. So it will be a bit more challenging though, because the nice system I had here with the uh, dispenser swapping would get more complicated. So here you could use the fact that this is getting pushed on multiple times, but this will be a lot more complicated than pushing it down once. Let's see if we can get it to work. So a lot of time was spent once again, but I made a working version and also prepared the area ready for it. Let's check it out. So the really interesting part is really how we swap out the dispensers here. That gave me the most trouble. Run this a bit quicker. So you can check that out. Also, by the way, in terms of um, yeah, TPS, the system is actually not that bad. Okay, so what we do here is as soon as this comes in, we power a sticky piston through the dispenser that pushes away the dispenser here. So it's out of the way, then we move this one block down, the other dispenser would attach to it, and you just need to move this dispenser around a little bit to bring it into the right position. Yeah, yeah it's happening now. And then we need to bring this dispenser in front of the helper here. So like that. Now it's getting refilled. Okay, yeah, this also definitely saves in some time. Another way to the deal with this is to not detach the dispenser at all from the, the flying machine module and then just reload it at the station. But obviously this was, would cost a lot of time. And adding chess and hoppers to this um, would cause more lag because just more moving parts it would cause lag. Would also maybe be an option, but I think with the dispenser swapping it's probably the best solution for this. All right, um, all right, I did a test earlier already. Good news is this is actually working. Also with the water removal, let's do a little time lapse so you can see it in action.
All right, so we finally got a working Spencer World Eater that doesn't use as much TNT as the TNT duping version. Earlier I already presented some ideas for how we could maybe save on some TNT on layers that don't have a lot of fluids and remove those ourselves. But I'm running a bit out of time, already spent so much time on this video. Yeah, during the development I actually also thought maybe a different concept would even be the best in order to save the most TNT instead of moving the dispensers back and forth we could maybe also just have a dispenser grid whoops a dispenser grid above and just move that one block down this might actually also be an option we just have like dispensers here dispense tnt into honey and that is whole thing just gets down downside would be um, that you would need to refill every single dispenser manually it would require a lot more dispensers and you also have to run around a bit more and overall we probably will also need a lot more blocks but this could be the most tnt efficient version just have a dispenser grid that moves down and then sweep us the bottom that remove the liquids yeah so this could be material for one of the future episodes of the movable block entity series the movable dispenser grid one thing i want to definitely mention because somebody in the comments will definitely bring it up Probably despite me talking about it now, wouldn't this use way too much TNT? Wouldn't it, would it even be feasible to mine deserts all day um, to craft enough TNT to run this? This definitely hinges on the availability of sand. So we have really powerful gunpowder farms, that shouldn't be the issue, but sand is really the, the thing we need for, for TNT. Uh, at the moment we still have sand duping, we can still use the end portal to dupe sand. This has been in the game for years and I'm quite sure it will stay in the game until we finally get renewable sand in a quantity that would make this feasible. I'm quite sure in the future we will get some kind of mechanic to farm sand. In the meantime, if they would now introduce mobile tile entities, TNT duping gets fixed, then we just need to dupe sand in order to make this work. But it's definitely feasible. We are also one step ahead already on the Patreon server where we implemented a lot of features that I would like to see in a vanilla game. Here TNT duping is not allowed, but we added renewable sand and movable tide entities. And the Patreons used my Dispenser World Eater to make a perimeter at spawn. In my opinion, in case movable block entities and renewable sand get added to the game, TNT duping is really not necessary. Technically we already have renewable sand using the Wandering Trader, but that would be way too slow to be yeah, an option. So we would need renewable sand Add it in a way that we can get 10,000 power, a large quantity. I also had a lot of fun designing the Dispenser World Eater today. So this was definitely a even more interesting challenge than doing with the TNT dupers. So this, yeah, really <laughs> excited about movable block entities and hope it will be added eventually. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.